Every creature is made from a recipe that comes from its DNA, spelled out in chemicals A's and C's and T's and G's inside the famous double helix. So how do you get from DNA to become a real creature? Well, let's take one of those fantastic voyages and we'll show you. We're going to find DNA and well, we'll make it a typical cell, so we're going to have to fly in and then go off to the nucleus of the cell, which will make a beautiful castle, the headquarters. And there's the DNA, the master code, inside the nucleus. DNA never leaves the nucleus. You ever meet one of those mean librarians? You know, <laughs> yes. Special reserve section. The one that go, pow! Right, you can take the thing, you can copy it, but you can't take the book, because somebody else might need it. So if DNA is locked in the nucleus, how do we get the information out to build our creature? Well, that scribe, copying recipes out of the cookbook and throwing them out the window, out to the cytoplasm C that makes up most of the cell, all those recipes floating through the air, they are RNA. And to finish up in that C, you see hundreds of thousands as well. We've made them into little guys with chef hats. Those would be ribosomes, and in your world, there are chefs who are using the recipes that are written in the RNA. And whenever a recipe lands on a chef, whatever it is, he cooks it. Whatever it is, he cooks it. And each recipe is for a protein. Proteins build cells, bone cells, brain cells, all cells. So all these chefs are basically building you. You are made of proteins. And the discovery of RNAi was an accident. It was a puzzle that appeared in a petunia. Maybe this. In 1986, geneticist Rich Jorgensen was working at a biotech startup company in California. He was asked to create a spectacularly dazzling flower. And so they decided to create a very, very, very purple petunia. Rich knew which gene produced purple. He knew how to sneak an extra copy of that gene into the plant's DNA, the master text, to be copied by that monk-like scribe. It will be transcribed by the monk the same as any other gene. And he'll throw the transcript out the window into the cytoplasm where the chef will be able to pick it up and use it. Rich thought that if he added more purple recipes, he'd get a purpler petunia. So he did it, and he waited, and what happened? We produced instead white flowers. White flowers? Complete opposite of what we had expected. Our initial reaction was that something must have been wrong with the gene that we had engineered to introduce to the plant. A mistake? A mistake. So we checked everything out, and there were no mistakes that we could find. The petunia was a big puzzle. Nobody understood why, when you add an extra gene for purple, you should not get more purple, but less purple. It took a decade of brilliant scientists working on petunias and fruit flies and worms and other organisms to finally work out what was going on. Quite by accident, Rich had discovered a secret inside living cells. Cells from time immemorial have had a mortal enemy called the virus. So let's imagine that the virus is a pirate ship. It lands. It then sends invaders inside the cell to shower recipes down to those cooks. The sole purpose of that virus is to make additional copies of itself to the point that the entire cell is filled up with this. And the cell explodes, releasing these viruses to go and then infect whatever other cells they can find. So the theory is that long ago, cells developed a secret defense system which we will call the cop. What the cop does is when viruses invade and create showers of murderous recipes, the cop looks and thinks, hmm, some of these have a very fishy shape. It's a chemical difference which comes down to some of the viral recipes are two pages instead of one, and one side is a mirror image of the other. But the point is, to the cop, there's something not right about this shape. So when they see it in that shape, they say virus. And they they go, say, uh-oh. Uh -oh. And the cop <laughs> destroys the recipe. Cells were able to tell that something was very funny when they saw mirror image messages and start not just destroying the messages, but destroying anything that looked like that message. They'd worked out this whole defense system against, against viral RNA, and we then accidentally stumbled into using it. The question, remember, was when Rich tried to make his petunia more purple, why did it turn white? Well, the answer, it turns out, was that Rich, by accident, discovered the cop. 
When Rich invaded the petunia cell and inserted his make more purple instructions, he didn't know it, but his purple instructions happened to have that suspicious viral shape. So when the cop saw the recipe, the cop thought, virus, and destroyed every recipe for purple in the cell. If there are no recipes for purple, the chefs don't cook purple. And because there's no purple pigment produced, the flowers will be white. And that's how Rich and his petunias helped discover what we now call RNAi. RNAi means RNA interference, because the cop is interfering with RNA messages, with the recipes in the cell.